Good morning, world. It's uh, day 435 of being sheltered in place, maybe. M maybe not that many, but it, it feels like it, doesn't it? I mean, it's, uh, man, it's crazy. I, I am still out and about. I have, I'm in what they call an essential uh, job. I, we, we do construction, I oversee uh, the production in other areas of a stone company, and so I'm, I'm still hitting it. Uh, but I, I know a lot of you are just stuck at home and, and quarantined and uh, working from home or, or whatever. And uh, I'm glad you joined me this morning uh, or you're watching this a little bit later. My goal is to give you a daily dose of be refreshed. That is a daily dose of refreshment. Um, I, I like to consider myself a dealer in hope. And uh, it's it's what I love to do is just provide hope. And sometimes that, that feels like medicine in order to get to that place. And so... Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, five attitudes right now, and I started yesterday. If you missed that, jump back and kind of find me on uh, on my Facebook page, and, and you'll see it there. But but I kind of like to I like a journey before we get to these five words, and we looked at them. Uh, it's in a, it's, they're all found in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter four. But to get there, you have to have a running start. I know we did that yesterday. I'm going to do it again today, really quick. But we're talking about five attitudes: the attitude of humility, be completely humble to be completely gentle, to be patient, to be forbearing, and to, to create uh, and have an attitude of unity. And so these are the things that we're looking at. But, but to get there, to make sense of those things and how we can even have those attitudes, which are powerful, by the way, in the home uh, and in the workplace, really wherever you are. But right now, it's usually home or workplace, right? That's kind of where we're sheltering. Uh, so, so we start at the book at the beginning of the book of Ephesians. I just remind you, if you are a Christ follower, and I, and I use the term Christ follower because Christian, it seems like kind of is, is overused, and there's a lot of people uh, who would consider there's some Christians that uh, probably aren't. And that, I don't mean that in a judging fashion. I just I just mean that that a true Christ follower um, has is is different than just those who kind of lump themselves in as a Christian and. But if you're a Christ follower today, then you're blessed. You're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place. It has nothing to do with our sheltering in place. It has nothing to do with, with the virus. You could have it. You could maybe you don't, maybe you do. Any of that, none of that takes away these blessings. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You've been adopted by God the Father, brought into his house, treated like you were his very own, treated just like he treats Christ. In fact, the same inheritance that Christ gets that Jesus does, so do you. You've been adopted. You've been brought in. Not just to live, like I like to say, in the bunkhouse, but, but in the big house. And, and you've been lavished with grace. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. And you've been lavished with that. Redemption. You've been bought back. You were, you were like a slave to sin. And God reached down and He bought you back on that slave market and redeemed you. And this is who you are. you got to know this. Uh, if you're going to live these attitudes out, we've been forgiven. That's huge. Huge. Listen, if if people understood forgiveness, I, I'm told by, by doctors and other things, that psychiatrists and so forth, that if we could assure people of their forgiveness, we could empty out most of the mental hospitals that we have. It's, it's a crazy thought, isn't it? And you and I have been forgiven of everything, of everything. Everything I did in my past, everything I'm going to do today, and everything I'm going to do tomorrow. That forgiveness is a constant. And I mean, I got so much I'd love to say about that, but I don't. We got to fly. Uh, I don't know how long you're going to be here. <clears throat> then I've been given the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit, God Himself, has been deposited into our lives as Christ followers so that He now is my GPS. He's the one that's leading and guiding me to true north, to, to be like God wants me to be. And, and so I'm, I'm blessed with all of these things. Not to mention that heaven is my home and I've got a destination. This this old body's wearing out. But man, one day I'm gonna I'm gonna have a new one and I'm gonna be living in this heavenly city and, and, and that's what's going on. But I didn't start out that way, neither did you. We started out uh dead in our trespasses and sins, the scripture says. Dead in our trespasses and sins. But God that's my favorite verse in all the scriptures, I think, Ephesians 4, 2. But God, being rich in mercy, or 2, 4, rather, uh, made us alive. And so uh, this, is, this is who we are. And I didn't, he didn't make me alive because he goes, well, Randy's a good guy or you're a good person. He made us alive because of his great love. 
it was by grace that you and I have been saved, not, not of works, because then we get to brag about it. And so then he says, okay, well, well he did that, but, but why did he do that? This is a powerful deal too in Ephesians chapter 4, and you probably know this verse. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works that he prepared beforehand that you and I should walk in it. Now, you want to talk about purpose? And you're wondering, well, I don't even know why I'm here. Well, if you're a Christ follower, there's a real reason why you're here. Because you're the expression of his soul to the people that he has placed you in the midst of. You're the expression of his soul. And he's created good works for you to do. And so you have value and you have purpose. And that's why we get to chapter 4, verse 1. And he says, I want you therefore to walk worthy of this calling that you've received in, in Christ Jesus. To walk worthy. Uh, listen, it's almost like, remember the movie Saving Private Ryan after they have, um, they, they have uh, saved his life. They found him. Many people have died to get to that place. And in the middle of that, they look at him after they've got him and they say, listen, do something with your life. Well, this is where Christ has us. Do something with your life. This is, this is where we are. And so we begin to look at these things and he says, therefore, as a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called with all humility and gentleness and with patience, bearing with one another in a spirit of unity. And so these are the qualities. These are the attitudes. Now, listen, if we know the truth that, that we've been blessed, if we know this, I'm blessed. Then, then that truth always, listen, truth always, when it lodges and when, we, when it connects with us, it drifts to the heart. The heart is kind of like the windshield of how we see life. And if my truth is that I'm blessed, that I, and I'm blessed and I didn't deserve it, and the reason why I'm here is to do good works, my attitude shifts tremendously. And so this is what he's saying. I want you to have these attitudes in you. And so we looked at last, yesterday, we looked at this concept of humility. To be completely humble. To think low. Literally, it's that you and I would go, hey, I'm second place. That, that's, where, that's what we think of. When I come into my home, I have to think, hey, second place. Tammy first, man. Whatever she needs, that's what I'm doing. And so, so I serve her in that capacity. Now, if she were in here, she would tell you that's not true. I don't all the time. But I do when those times when I know who I am. And, and my son, Jackson, he walks in. I'm second place. What can I do for him? Imagine what your family would be like if everybody in that home looked like that and had that same attitude and, and they all came in, what can I do to help you? And what can I do to serve you? See, that's that spirit of humility. It's where we die to self. You, you can't be humble if you uh, don't know where you came from. See, I know I'm a dirty, rotten, stinking little sinner. And because I know I'm a dirty, rotten, stinking little sinner, it shapes how I see other people. And so when I realize that my goal is to serve others, it's, it's a game changer. Because the second attitude that flows on that, and that's where we want to get today, and the second attitude is so powerful. The, 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 the second attitude is this attitude of gentleness, now, gentleness doesn't mean wimp, doesn't mean uh, milk toast, it doesn't mean, you know, I'm just a wet noodle and I just, I'm kind of just, you know, all meek and, and quiet and somber. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do that my strength has been brought under control. That it's like a stallion. It's like a, um, it, it's, it's like when you, when, you, when you see that stallion that runs, but then a bridle and bit has been put in that stallion. And, and, and there is strength, they're full of power, but yet they're brought under control. This is what the Spirit of God does. And so gentleness is that quality that, that we need to have. I, I can't do that if I'm full of myself. I can't do that if I've got a little bit of self. It, I have to die to self. And when I die to self and I come into my home or my workplace and I'm, I'm humble, I'm thinking of you more than I am me, it's really the golden rule, uh, but when I do that, the next attitude that flows is this thing called gentleness. It's like, it's like medicine that, that soothes us. That, that's what it is. And Galatians, uh, Galatians 6, 4, Paul says this, if you see your brother trapped in sin, listen, people can irritate us, can't they? And people can do things that frustrate us. And, 
And, and so it requires, because we live in a world of people that are all messed up like ourselves, uh, we're going to rub up against each other. We're going to do things that, that upset each other. And the response to that has to be that we're just, we're just gentle. And so I go back to where Paul says, if you see a brother or sister kind of trapped in a sin, now listen, it's pretty easy to see. When you're trapped in a house, you're going to see people trapped in sin, aren't you? And, and so what happens there is that, that as we're trapped, when I see someone trapped in sin, he says, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. See, my job isn't just to beat people over the head with what they're doing wrong. My, my goal is, so when I walk in the house and things aren't as they should be, and, or I'm in work and things aren't as they should be, I have, I have two choices. I can respond harshly or I can respond gently. The one who's humble responds gently because they know that, that we too are just like them. And so we give, we give this gentleness to them. And so, man, if you think about that and think about what it means to be gentle and then, and then you... Uh, you just be that to people and you respond under control, uh, how powerful that would be. Just a spirit of gentleness. Isn't, that, isn't it soothing? Isn't it something powerful about, about having someone who's just steady and, and you know that you can kind of confide in them and, if, and, and because they're, they're gentle. They're a gentle soul. This is who we all are. It doesn't have anything to do with our personality. It's had everything to do with, with being gentle. And so these are the two words that we've looked at so far. And I just wanted to stop by and, and share that with you today. And uh, hey, listen, if you, if you would, would you just hit the share button when you see this? Would you just kind of hit the share button and, uh, and let everybody know what's happening and share some good word today? But that's the daily dose for today. Man, may God bless you and keep you safe uh, in this time. Lord bless. Have a great day.